What's going on everybody? Today I'm going over the best kept secrets that the pros don't want you to know about Livescope. Alright, so today we are going over a few things about live scoping, that being the line, rod, reel, lure that you need to use, a uh, handful of secrets that the pros don't want you to know and a lot of people don't tell you on YouTube, and lastly, my live scope settings for my Garmin. Now lately I've been putting in a lot of time live scoping and learning the ropes of it and everything, and I've been consistently getting a little bit better with it, but the main thing is finding out what you're looking for. And nine times out of ten, that is bait. Bait fish, shad, whatever you guys call them around you, you have to find that forage that your bass around you are eating. Around me, we have two main types of forage in our shad. That is a threadfin shad and a gizzard shad. Now, obviously, bass eat more than just shad, and in particular, eat more than just those two, but those are our two primary around here where I'm located. And as you all know, the old saying, find the bait, find the fish. Now that you find the bait, and you obviously find the fish in the bait, what do you need to throw, and what are some of the secrets to throwing these lures in these schools of fish. Now most of the time you want to match your forage as close as possible. With that being said, and our primary forage around here being threadfin shad, you want to throw a smaller type of bait. This right here just so happens to be an angler tungsten eclipse head with that natural eye and a Domeki Armor Shad in white. You want it to look as natural as possible because those fish, they are so keyed in on that bait that a lot of times it can be very hard to get a bite. Now, not saying that you can't go out there and throw a solid chartreuse one or a blue one and catch them, because I've done that. But for the most part, you want to match the hatch. Now, as for the rod, line, reel setup, I like throwing it on a spinning rod. In particular, a seven foot Dixie Custom medium action spinning rod. Uh, I like a 10 pound braid to a six pound fluorocarbon leader that helps reduce the drag and I like throwing it on a 2500 size reel, it's just more comfortable for me. The gear ratio does not really matter, I mean you can probably go to a little bit faster gear ratio just so you can reel the lure in faster and get it back out there as you're scoping these fish. But one, actually we'll go ahead and throw two of these tips in, two tips for you guys to help you get more bites and that is tying a loop knot on your bait, that loop knot helps you from whenever you do end up catching a fish or missing a fish a lot of times if you tie directly to that lure the without the loop knot when you miss a fish it's going to sit vertical that knot is going to slide up and it's going to sit vertical which is not natural at all you want your bait sitting horizontal and that gives it the most natural presentation another thing that you want to do and it ties in with your line size to help reduce drag is you want to throw a tungsten head and this tungsten head has two benefits, or actually has multiple benefits, but two of the main benefits is it is a smaller profile which gives it less drag and helps you get those more finicky bites, but also you can go with a heavier head and it'll keep that small profile. You can throw a half, three quarter, one ounce head and it'll keep that small profile. And not to mention it is tungsten, so you have a lot harder return on your live scope and you can see it out there a little bit better. I notice I can see this out there 80 to 100 foot a lot better than I can lead. Now as for fishing the lure, you want to keep the lure above the fish and you want to keep a consistent retrieve. Whether you be barely shaking it or just reeling it or both, you want to be consistent and you want to keep it above them because 9 times out of 10, those fish that are feeding up, they're in that bait, they're, they're going in there, they're running through the bait, trying to eat it, trying to kill what they can. And most of the time they're going, they're underneath it. You'll see them come up through it and everything on live scope. So you want to keep it above their head, gives it the most natural presentation and a consistent retreat. And if you guys want to pick up any of these Angler Tungsten Eclipse heads, I have a link down in the description. You click it, take it to anglertungsten.com and make sure you use code CSF10 at checkout. It'll save you guys 10% and it helps the channel out greatly. Alright guys, now for what you've probably been waiting for, Garmin settings. These are what I believe are some of the best Garmin settings out there. I've watched a lot of videos, I've played with it a lot, and these settings right here help me the best. So first thing, you want your forward range set to 100 foot. 
I never change it. Even if I'm crappie fishing or anything, I never change it because I like to keep my my casting consistent. That way I know how far 100 foot is, how far 60 foot is, how far 30 foot is. It helps me stay more consistent when I'm out there scoping. Depth range, I adjust it with the bottom, uh, the depth of the bottom. So say if I'm fishing 25 feet, I keep it 30. If I'm fishing 10 feet, I keep it 15 or 20. Just to help me keep a more consistent and I also don't lose much real estate on my screen. Color, or not color game, just the regular gain, I keep it between 66 and 74. This right here, you will be adjusting it a lot depending on your type of lake you are in, whether you fish clear water, dirty water, current, no current. It's, it's all very dependent on your water situation. Uh, the biggest thing I have found, there's two color schemes I like. One of them is emerald, the, the bright green one. And, but my favorite one by far is the blue color scheme. I feel like it pops more and also if you're fishing brush piles you can actually see those fish pulse a little bit more so than the regular brush pile. It's, it's, it's fascinating to be honest with you. You can actually see them like it, they look alive in the tree. It's pretty crazy. Color gain, I keep it between 60 and 80. Um, I feel like the lower side of that is a little bit better. I probably eventually start going down there in that 50 range but I feel like 60 to 65 is really the juice so to speak now color limit this right here I've played with a lot um, I still like it on a little bit of the higher side I like to keep it between 60 and 100 uh, currently I have it on 60 but I had it on 80 the other day and it looked good too um, this one right here I feel like it gives you more of a color it lets you know like how hard something is so to speak like in the blue color scheme red is the hardest return you get and so you have a red and I think it transitions to like orange a yellow and then it goes to blue and if you have that color limit maxed up there a little bit you can actually see how hard of a return you're getting and you can actually see sometimes I feel like you can see fish in rock because you'll have a really really bright red on rock and then you'll have like a little bit of an off red for the fish it's you can call me crazy but that's just the way i see it now i have tried this on the lower settings 30 to 40 range it is still very good there but i i like the higher setting personally now noise reject i like to keep it medium there's times where i've seen low look good and high look good but for the most part i feel like medium is a very good middle ground it's obviously why it's medium and i feel like it helps me get rid of a little bit of noise on the screen uh the ghost reject i have it set on auto if I don't run it on auto I like to run it on high it just helps eliminate the like ghost tree effect because there's technically three cones in a live scope transducer and it kind of like blends them together that's why you'll have those little marks every now and then like just a little ways off the boat and in the middle of the water column TVG I always keep it off everything I've looked at it just looks better off everything I've researched they're saying off so we're gonna keep it off and lastly on the installation part I manually set it on forward range like forward like you know that way you're shooting the thing forward I don't like down I don't like perspective or landscape whatever this they call it now I like to keep it forward I feel like it helps the graph run a little bit more I don't know easier I guess it's easier on it because it's not having to process oh I hit a wave and now it's wanting to go to down or something like that and lastly the stabilization I always keep it on or auto uh, that has to do with your compass I think it's ARHS or something like that don't quote me on that part but it just helps you whenever you're in waves and stuff it helps you keep your your transducer and your screen and everything looking pretty balanced but that is my Garmin setup those are some of the tips I have for you guys again we'll run all those tips really really quick always keep the lure above them consistently work it use tungsten uh, natural presentations again angler tungsten has a great great head for you guys to use and lastly find the bait find the bait you find the fish if you stay with me this long please please consider subscribing give the th video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if it helped you out uh, down below comment down below what you feel like the best lure is to use for live scoping and your and your favorite settings for Garmin who knows I might try them and give them a shot and it might help me catch another bass or two but I appreciate you guys watching I appreciate all the support lately the channel's doing fantastic but thank you guys for watching and until next time
catch them big.